Hello, Captains, and welcome to Star Trek Online. I'm your host, Brent Justice. Welcome to my channel, Just Gaming For Us. So what I'm going to do today is to play the new featured episode for the 10th anniversary of Star Trek Online. They're calling this 10th anniversary Star Trek Legacy. But make no mistake, this is the 10th anniversary of Star Trek Online, and made specially for this 10th anniversary is a two-part episode, it looks like, at least to me, that is basically a fan service to the fans of Star Trek in general, and I'm looking forward to it from that front. Now, if you have not been caught up on the 10th anniversary of Star Trek Online, check out my introduction to the 10th anniversary. I did a video on that showing you what you can do and how you get the new ship and everything that's in the new 10th anniversary. Also, I have a video playing the new Task Force Operation or TFO called To Hell With Honor. I did a playthrough of that on three different ships in one video, three runs of that. So go check out that video if you wanna see what that new TFO is about. But today, it's all about the new episode. Now, here's what I know going into this. This is based on an original Star Trek episode called The Savage Curtain. The Savage Curtain is a season three, episode 22. And in uh, light of all that, I decided to go ahead and uh, watch that episode again before recording this video. So now I am aware of what happened in that episode. I've seen it, it's in my brain. And we'll go over all that because um, it's probably going to be relevant, I'm guessing, in this mission. But um, there are spoilers involved, so if you've never seen the episode of that original Star Trek episode, The Savage Curtain, then obviously you might not want to watch this or play the mission until you watch it. So there will be spoilers moving forward. That's just your warning right there. I will be playing the new mission on my character, The Doctor. He is a science character, and I will be flying the science spearhead. So that is the setup that I am using. Science character, science spearhead, and he's all maxed out. He's wearing the Picard 2399 uniform, so he's all ready for whatever the game has to throw at us. Now, one other little thing before we begin, I will be playing this mission and uh, the next one in advanced difficulty. Advanced, not normal, not elite, but advanced. So this is going to be a lot more difficult than it typically would be in normal. I'm assuming the enemies will hit harder and I don't know if there's a lot of ground or space or not, but we will see what happens. It'll be harder to take down enemies. It'll give us a little bit of a challenge, though. So there's that. So yes, even though I'm maxed out and geared up on my ship and ground, playing it on advanced will be a challenge. So just keep that in mind. Otherwise, I have no idea what to expect. So let's talk about the Savage Curtain really quick. In the original series, the Savage Curtain, um, we meet President Lincoln in space. It's quite an interesting scene. But yes, President Lincoln in a chair in space. And we also meet Surak, a Vulcan, who created basically the philosophy of being logical and hiding your emotions. Uh, that, that's the, to the Vulcans, he is the guy. He is like the guy that started all that. So very important. Both of them represent the side of good. And... These lava rock creatures from this planet, Excalbia or something like that, um, they have created this fight between the forces of good and evil. And it is up to the captain and and Spock. Is this is just a captain and Sp this is just a Kirk and Spock episode, by the way. It's like they're on the ground, and uh, with Lincoln and Surak, they fight bad forces, which is basically a Klingon, um, a commander from like the early 21st century, who's apparently was like a bad guy that we've never heard of in Star Trek until that time. Um, and, uh, some, uh, some others thrown in. I can't remember all the other bad guys. There's one alien. I can't remember what that was, but, um, 
They basically uh, fight off. Oh, the Klingon, by the way, is Kaelas. That's the big thing there. Yeah, it's Kaelas. So they're fighting the actual, well, not the actual, but sort of the actual Kaelas of all things. So that's pretty huge. We actually do see Kaelas in uh, an original series episode. So anyway, the whole point of the episode is about good fighting evil and they're trying to judge which is better or something. It's a very lofty goal. Uh, The episode is very budget friendly. Um, I will say that not really a lot happens. The props and all very simple. It is an action episode, but yet there's a ton of dialogue. Long, long, long sessions of dialogue. The episode, you could tell, is like a bottle episode. It's a very small, centered episode that they did not spend a lot of money on. And that is The Savage Curtain. It did not appear to me to be this great, like, memorable memorable episode after I saw it. It's certainly not something that I would think they would create in Star Trek Online based off of that. So I'm interested to see where it goes because it just really was not a memorable episode for me. Kind of boring, actually. But we'll see what they've got in store for Star Trek Online. So let's let's do this. Um, The Measure of Morality, Part 1. By the way, I'll make two videos on this. So uh, The Measure of Morality, Part 1, and then the second video, Measure of Morality, Part 2. A request for routine assistance from an ally turns into an unexpected trial, part one of two. The long-range sensor arrays in the trailer system went offline recently. Last thing they picked up before that happened was a Borg scout ship. I'm heading to trailers now to investigate. If this is the beginning of a new Borg incursion, I could use some backup. Meet me there as soon as you can. So here's what I like. Seven of nine, looking great. This is obviously um, a more current version of her in the 25th century. Um, probably looking close to what she looks like in Picard, which is really nice. Um, haven't seen her yet in Picard. Um, maybe she'll be in the next episode. Um, Universal Kit Module Delphic Puddle. We'll look at that. That sounds interesting. So, a Borg incursion. We need to go to the Triolis system. Let's just transwarp straight there so we can get this show on the road. And remember, I'm playing an advanced difficulty. I have to mention that again, simply because that's going to make our our job much harder. But here we are in the Triolis trial- system, so let's go. No idea what to expect here. We're in 02411. Been a while. You look well. Yeah, 24. From what I hear about your exploits, that's an impressive feat. Back to business. Spotting a Borg scout here made a lot of people nervous, and with good reason. So it said there at the beginning we're in the year 2411, which is which is what we are in the game currently in Star Trek Online. Early 25th century. Um, liter- literally like 11, 12, year, 12 years after Picard. So Picard takes place in 2399. This is 2411, 12 years after that. All right, I can imagine. So, some old friends called in a favor, and here I am. I came here looking for Borg, but the real problem turned out to be sabotage. Orion smugglers fouled up the long-range array, but they left the short-range sensors intact. I have plenty of evidence from the sensor logs to turn over to Alliance officials. And the Borg? Still a concern. If they're sizing up this quadrant as an incursion zone, we need to know about it. I have a few ideas on upgrading the sensor arrays, making them harder to disable and better at spotting Borg. Beam me over and we can sort out the details. Okay. Beam in seven of nine on board. Looks like she's on a runabout. With your assistance, I can complete the modifications quickly. Uh, USS Crow River. Interesting name. Federation uh, runabout there. It's been a while since we've seen a runabout. I like the runabout. It's a really neat design. Perform satellite updates. Sure. Good. Now that we have a working array, our next step will be initiating the new security protocols. Hold on. Are you seeing this? The long-range sensors just lit up like a Dabo table. Analysis. Reading a massive energy surge. We're being scanned. Something's overriding all our control systems, attempting to bypass. Shields up. Brace for impact. I guess. Ship is under attack. I don't know what it is.
Okay, we are being flung somewhere. Holy crap, we are out of control. Look at that. That's a nice looking... Oh man, that was a sweet transition. That transition was incredible for Star Trek Online. I love that. So where did oh, we end that up? Was unpleasant. Still, there are no damage reports, no casualties. Well, this looks like Excalib Excalibia from from the uh, episode. I'm guessing since that's what we're, this is all about. Where are we? Scanning. This is unexpected. Care to enlighten us? According to astrometrics, we were catapulted several hundred light years from Trellis to the Excalbia system. So several hundred light years in a matter of seconds. Excalbia seemed to recall a few space legends about this place. Here's some facts to go along with those legends. In the 23rd century, Excalbians abducted the USS Enterprise and subjected some of her crew to a series of combats. Some sort of morality test. I don't like the looks of this. Is it possible we're here for the same reasons? Feels that way to me. I doubt they dragged us all the way out here to have a wreck to Gino and talk about baseball. There's one way to find out for sure. Hail them and see what they want. All right. Lots of atmospheric interference on Excalbia. We can't establish calms. I can boost the signal once the ship is in a standard orbit. Assuming the Excalbians are in a talking mood, we should have answers soon. Agreed. Helm, take us into standard orbit of Excalbia. We've closer and boost calm signal. So what was interesting about the episode is that they created a landmass that had our atmosphere on it just for us. Otherwise, the planet is uninhabitable to us. Very molten, as you can see. Molten rock. We are receiving your signal. On behalf of the Excalbian people, I bid you welcome. It's Abraham Lincoln, right out of the episode. Forgive me, sir. I wasn't expecting to speak with, um, Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> yes, I suppose that would be a bit of a surprise. You'll pardon me for that, I hope. Some time ago, I met and fought beside one of your own, Captain James Kirk. Under the circumstances, we felt seeing a familiar face would make this meeting go a little smoother. So basically, uh, as you can see, I'm going to be reading through all the dialogue, so just sit back and relax. I see. Why are we here, Mr. President? That is a complicated matter, I'm afraid. I think it would be easier to discuss it face to face. We prepared a meeting ground on the surface of Excalbia. It meets your needs for atmosphere and climate, as I understand them. Will you join us there? They did the voice acting pretty good for him, too, I have to say. We accept your gracious invitation, Mr. President. We'll beam down at once. There we go. Looks like I only get one person. Might as well take my healer with me in case I need. Even though he's also science, he can heal me. And he's a dinosaur. So, pluses for that. Welcome, friends. I do hope the local climate is to your liking. The climate's mm. fine. It's our abduction that we have a problem with, friend. Oh, my oh. apologies. She's feisty. It was not an action of my choosing, I can assure you. It's the rock. The rock people are back. Perfect, just like the show. Let's hear him talk. Your presence is required for a awesome. matter of great importance. Greater than conversations with dead presidents? Long ago, the two of us were involved in a study, if you will. An evaluation of two concepts, good and evil. The initial results were ultimately inconclusive. The debate has continued since that time. We now seek a final resolution. What does that have to do with us, exactly? Took them a while. You have been chosen as advocates for the concept of good. But you will not face it alone. Click, click. Yep, yeah, alright. I knew she was going to show up somehow. Hello. Looks like we have a lot of work to do here. She's the concept of good mildly. as well. Alright, well, I already got a few things to say here. Number one... They did the voice on the uh, rock creature very well. Sounds just like the uh, from the episode. So that's good. Looks just like them, too. Um, 
Again, a molten surface with just a little bit of habitable area, just like the episode. Seven of nine, very feisty. <laughs> now, this concept of good and evil, um, we see this a lot in Star Trek, actually. Uh, think back to the very first episode of The Next Generation with Q. Q's whole thing is that he's judging humanity, you know, good or evil. Are they a, a menace or not? I, so you see this theme a lot, and even these rock creatures are doing the same thing to us. So that's very interesting. But it looks like representing good is Michael Burnham. She is with us, so that's how they brought her into this mission. Um, also, just looking at the graphics in this area, uh, they have definitely improved a little bit here. They are looking very good for how old this game engine is. Talk to Yarnak. Apparently he has a name. Just kind of wanted to look around a little bit. You have questions. I will attempt to clarify our intentions. In this trial, you will be accompanied by associates that we have created for you. You will confront a variety of situations in opposition to evil forces. Your actions will be judged, as will those of your opponents. The prevailing concept will guide us as a people. We shall pursue the virtues of God, or the vices of evil. What's never been explained is how is how these creatures have the power that they do. Are they just magical? Do they have technology we don't see? Do they have powers we don't know about? Because they flung our ship hundreds of light years here in a few seconds. They are able to create Abraham Lincoln and other people just out of nowhere. Uh, they have a great amount of power. Where is that coming from? I do wonder. All right, why have you chosen violence as a means to evaluate the concepts? We find violent conflicts produce pure examples of good and evil. They provide the best results to evaluate and judge. And if we refuse to participate... Failure to participate will be seen as your endorsement of the supremacy of evil. The trial will then conclude with a judgment in favor of evil and our subsequent pursuit of the concept as a guiding principle. Well, that's just stupid. So, I was okay uh, on the storyline up to right now. This is uh, going a little bit um, out of bounds of the episode that I saw. Why would they just default to evil? That That's kind of stupid. That's yeah, not much of a choice. The trial awaits you. Proceed through the portal behind me when you are prepared. So I think looks... we need to be cautious when dealing with the Excalbians. They're a lot like Q, minus a sense of humor. Hmm. Fashion sense could use a little work, too. Yeah, so where do they get their power from? Are they Q-like? For now, I say we play their game and stay in one piece. Look for opportunities to swing things in our favor. Our new teammate here might have some insight into the situation as well. Okay. Michael Burnham, of the USS Discovery. The Discovery, Crossfield class, served with distinction, reported missing in action. Judging by your uniforms, I'd say I'm in the future. The last thing I remember was preparing for battle with my crew, and the crew of the Enterprise. Since we're having this discussion, I'm guessing we won that fight. My apologies, my memory is a bit fuzzy. Possibly a side effect of whatever brought me here. Yeah, welcome to 2411. Over 150 years. Yep. Fascinating. Right. I'll catch up later. Assuming we get through this trial in one piece. Well, I'll go ahead and catch you up on one thing, Commander. They still use Discovery shuttles 150 years later, at the heart of Starfleet even. In fact, they are school buses, civilian transport taxis, and uh, right there at the heart of Starfleet. In 150 years later, your Discovery shuttles, they sure have lasted a long time for out of nowhere. <laughs> Sorry guys, I had to throw that in there because it's so ridiculous. To address your original question, I wish I had all the answers, but I know as much as you do. Going through this trial will give us the chance to conduct some tests of our own, learn more about them and the situation here. All right, let's not keep the omnipotent, uh, uh, omnipotent beings waiting. Take heart, my friends. Yarnick has a forceful personality, but his voice is not the only one heard here. There are many Excalbians who would embrace virtues before vices. Okay. Well said. 
And as one of your allies here, I have a warning for you. The trials are drawn from your past experiences and records, but they will not be identical recreations. There will be alterations to test your responses and those of your opponents. Expect the unexpected. Please, accompany me. So I guess we're going to encounter past battles or something we have to do again. So instead of fighting here, which the episode had us fighting here, we're going to be fighting elsewhere. Okay, sure. Why not? Beyond that portal, the first trial awaits. Good luck, my friends. If you say so. Um, my tricorder is showing a Class M tropical biome. By the look of things, this world is under attack. I'm reading a lot of weapons fire from several locations in the area. This is Brea 3. I've been here before during this battle, in fact. This is a safe position for now, but that could change soon. We need to get to cover fast. I see a plaza ahead. And casualties. Enemy forces may be in the area. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, this is that Romulan world, um, Obasek, that whole storyline, Obasek storyline. This is, uh, I played this mission. We've all played this mission. So it's like we're going back and doing old missions, but from a different perspective. That's actually really a unique and great this idea. This did happen long ago. Some of the bodies are still warm. When did this take place, originally? I don't recognize the uniforms on these Vulcans. They aren't Vulcans, they're Romulans. Romulans? <sighs> You're serious. Those are Romulans. Yeah, this is a lot to take in. This Ro is a lot to take in. <laughs> Romulans are an offshoot of Vulcans who left after the time of awakening. The Romulans are... I clearly have a lot of catching up to do. But the middle of a war zone isn't an ideal place for a history lesson. No, it's not. These Romulans of Tal Shiar, members of a covert military intelligence force. Their list of enemies is long. Any number of them could be responsible for this attack. In this case, it's uh, Riemann partisans. So I need to examine the bodies. This one was killed by heavy plasma weaponry. Strange. I'm also reading trace amounts of several exotic particles in the area. Anti-proton, tachyon. Whoever else was in this fight used some extremely advanced weapons. Sounds like Iconian weaponry. That makes sense. The Iconians were allies of the Tal Shiar at this time. They were probably fighting at their side. This may be one of the unexpected changes Lincoln warned us about. Iconians arriving here early. Yeah, that's an unpleasant thought. So we may have to fight Iconians, guys. Oh! Some kind of constructs. Here we go. I They're guess we are. Anti-proton weapons. Arrows. Yeah. Oh, look at my health. They're pretty tough. I am glad I brought my healer, though. Glad I brought my healer, and because of the Nakul uh, stuff I got going on, some Nakul power, I have like that protective shield. Those so were that's Iconians. Nice. Uh, not quite. They were heralds, harbingers of things heralds to come. Heralds are augmented servants of the Iconians. They were used primarily as shock troops. We've encountered them before, but if they're here now, things are worse than expected. There's a tactical force field blocking our way. That looks like the emitter over there. Should be simple enough to destroy it. Okay. Looks like we're going to encounter more, though. Tactical force field generator. LCR and Heralds fighting Riemann combat squads. Wonderful. So, these Riemanns, they're on our side. Good to know. And she's got her old weapon there. I guess it's effective enough. You there! 
I would speak with you. Obasek? It is Obasek. Your timing is fortuitous, my old friend. My resistance forces are closing in on Hakiv's laboratory, but he has opened an Iconian gate. The Iconians have sent their minions to aid Hakiv, but all is not lost. We can still stop them. The lab is not far from here. If we can fight our way past the guards, we can put an end to all this and Hakiv. Um, I'm not going to say anything about the Excalbians because he's not going to know. But, well, I guess we'll do it anyway. Excalbians? No, Iconians. Hakiv has brought them here. They're putting up. Will quite you a help fight. us? Yeah, I'm going to help you. Let's Looks go. like there's another tactical force field blocking the way. This Hakiv really doesn't want to be interrupted, does he? No. It may not be in an obvious place. Check the nearby buildings and rooftops. Uh huh. Excellent. Hakiv has holed up in the south like the cornered vermin he is. Once we're near his position, oh, what she's I can got. set up a jamming field to prevent him from beaming out. What is then she? we can bring him to justice at last. She has a much higher health than I do. But um, what is she? What kind of weapons are those? You might be able to block transporters, Obasek, but I doubt you can block a functional Iconian gate. As long as that remains open, Hakiv will be able to escape. Deal with the gate first. Then you can talk about justice all you want. Yeah, they're a lot tougher on advance, that's for sure. Oh, we got mortars up there. Destroy the next force field generator. Yeah, it's neat because the first time we played this mission, we weren't down here in all these places, so... This is oh, a... Look out! A unique point of view. Oh crap, they're all around me. Yeah, that came out of nowhere fast. I was totally surrounded and I didn't realize it and was taking on a lot of damage. Warfare as a trial of good versus evil. Curious. War is a lot of things, but good isn't one of them. We're in this area, but it looks a little different than it did. Unless this is a different area. If this is that same area, the, there should be a gate in this room. And there's not a gate in this room. So, oh no, there is a gate. Here's the gate right here. So this is the same area, but it looks different. And then this right here is a giant gate. But this area does look a little different. Ah, Obersek. So good of you to join us today. I've dreamed of ridding the galaxy of your stench for some time. And now, with the Iconians at my side, that dream shall become a reality. This ends now, Hakiv. No amount of Iconian or Tal Shiar scum 
will stop me. Blood calls for blood. We have bigger problems. The Iconian Gate is still online, remember? Hakiv can bring in Iconian reinforcements as long as it is. Then let's shut it down. Keep Hakiv and his forces busy while we work, or this trial will end real soon. And not in our favor. So, oh crap. Oh, I can't go that way. I was blocked off. I need taking fire over here. Yeah, okay, I'm having a problem. Hold on. That defiler was... He meant business. Holy moly. Well, that's rough. Man, between Hakiv and that defiler. He has a Spread out. That, was, that was you rough. You think you've stopped me? The Iconians already know. They know everything. I don't care. Blood calls for blood, Hakiv. No, not like this. You're better than this. If well, you he do did this, it. He did it before. It won't be justice. It'll be murder. Uh, he's gonna pull you a don't weapon. Have to do this. He's gonna pull a weapon. He must pay for what he's. And he's dead. Now can we kill him? All right. What's the call? Help Obasek or catch Hakiv? Oh, I have a choice. Obasek's in bad shape. He needs field surgery right now, or he's not going to make it. I can't do this alone. I'll need your help to save him. Hakeem's getting away. If he leaves through a gateway, he could return with enough Iconians to finish us off. Do you want to pursue him? Ah, oh, they're giving us a moral choice because the Excalibans are—they are—they are judging us, and we have to make a moral choice. So, to do right, we need to help Obasek. But I do wonder where the other option would lead. I'm—I'm going to choose Obasek right now. I may have to replay this and do it the other way to see what happens. But let's help Obasek right now. And here's Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, I knew it. It's a moral choice we had to make. Rest easy, friends. This part of the trial has reached its conclusion. There's a portal nearby. Use it to return to Yarnik. He wishes to review the results of the trial. All right, let's see what he has to say about all this. But I do wonder where the other option leads. I do wonder. Anyway, it was really cool replaying this again from a different angle. All right, let's go back. Meanwhile, oh, it is building to something. So Hakiv got away. Or not? I have a proposal for you. The Borg? So by not saving him, I remember not taking out Hakiv, it led to the a Borg assimilating him or something? Whoa, I do have to try this the other way. Alright, let's talk to the Excalibur. At a critical moment, you move to save Obasek's life. Because of this, Akiv escapes and convinces the Iconians to pursue a scorched earth assault on their enemies. Billions more die in the following war as a result. An intriguing choice, to be sure. So, bad things happened. Okay, it was a hard choice, but I stand by my decision. To callously leave an ally to die upon the battlefield is not the mark of a strong soul. Saving the life of a comrade in the fight against evil 
was a brave and noble act. One worthy of praise rather than scorn. Mm -hmm. The trial continues. Proceed through the nearby portal when you are ready to begin the next evaluation. Come this way for your next trial. So here we go. We got another one. And it's going to leave us, I guess, again with a moral choice. Okay, let's do this. See where we go next. I like this idea of traveling to past Any idea where we events. are? I haven't seen anything like this. Kind of looks like that uh, the research center or the crinum. This is the, oh yeah, the Anorax, a crinum vessel built for temporal war. Yes, some of this tech is very advanced, most likely from the future. Anorax was heavily modified after a scientist named Noy stole it from Kiana Station. I've got a bad feeling about this, Chewy. So this is the Anorax, so yeah, we're back here. Hello, friends. Enemy The Krenim. Damage control teams. The ship's been in a rough fight. Reach the bridge. I wish I got more than one bridge officer with me, but oh well. This looks like some kind of command station. Secure the area. We might be able to find useful data here. Some of the bridge crew's crew is trying to escape. <laughs> Read computer logs. The sphere builders grow suspicious of my inquiries. I believe they begin to realize what my ultimate goal is. What I shall do once this war is won. Today, at Procyon 5, I will undo what the Alliance has done to them. To me. To my family. I will bring back my wife and child. All of this is for them, and no one will stop me. Uh-huh. The petty squabbles over the Tox Utat have become tiresome. First Krog, and now Azure and Boratus. They growl and demand and threaten to depart over the artifact like petulant children. If it were not a critical element of my plans, I would have left it on Ryza, along with the corpses of Picard and his charming thief. Yep. Okay, we know that story. My plan to recruit Admiral Lita to the Temporal Liberation Front was a success. Keeping her loyalty, however, is quite challenging. Like so many Terrans, her dreams of empire are strong. As long as those dreams remain in her reality, our partnership shall continue. The moment her dream takes hold in our reality, my reality, then the honeymoon, as they say, is over. It's nice hearing these from a different perspective. Krog becomes impatient. Despite her successful recovery of the Tox Utat and the restoration of the Nakul Star, she wants more. She wants revenge. It is tempting to use the Tox Utat on Saul, on Vulcan, on every star in the Alliance. But I have a better use for it at Procyon 5. Nakul Vengeance shall have to wait. Funny, I've been to Procyon 5. It's unremarkable. In our time, at least. Looks like things change considerably in the next century. Indeed, we're in the middle of the final battle in a temporal war. And on the bridge of the enemy flagship, no less. Judging by the look of things, the battle may not be going well for this temporal liberation front. We should leave. By now we've been detected by their security systems. And I'd rather not be around when they send combat teams to retake the bridge. There's a turbo lift down this way.
Let's go, people. Come on. Unfreeze. There you go. This door here. Okay, let's go. Come on. I'm detecting a massive buildup of temporal energy ahead. Yeah, along with multiple life forms all armed. Lita. It is Admiral Lita. Ow. But she's really backing up. Boy, she's hard to take down. She must have a high health. Well, she is annoyingly running away. You haven't seen the last of me! Wow, that was rough. She took a long time to take down and kept running the opposite direction. I see him. Noise on the upper platform. Ah, this battle, huh? The final battle in this mission. Looks like we have to do it again. And we got the Nikul now. Waste time as you see fit, Furman. It will be for naught. I remember de uh, defeating Krog. Okay. Get this one out of the way. Good. All right. Defeat Azure and Baratus. Are they the two Nikuls? How do we get up to the upper platform? That's what I'm trying to figure out. History shows you have a habit ah. of meddling in the affairs yes. of others. Oh crap, I walked right into that. We believe it is time to break you of that habit. These are the ones from the episode. Got him. Now we just have to worry about her. Got it. Alright, good. Wow. 
Confront Noi now. Now the hard one. I'm gonna have to call out all the stops for this one, probably. Hello, Here Noi. Here to parlay. Look what I or have. Shall we just start shooting at one another? Yeah, let's just start shooting. I'm fine with that. You. <laughs> Apparently, Daniels hasn't grown weary of plucking you out of time and sending you to vex me. How many times have I killed you now? Four? Five? Honestly, I've lost count. It doesn't matter. Before I kill you, again, understand this. After today, the Alliance ends forever, and you with it. Daniels won't be around to save you this time. Stand down. Your insanity ends now. I will fight this battle again and again until I stand victorious. I understand the need to bring back the ones we've lost. Living in the past is an exercise in futility. I will not be defeated! I control time itself! Do you now? Time controls us. Deep, but wasted on Noi. His grief blinds him to things like logic and truth. He's doing it again. I'm so close. I won't let you win. Core is ready. I will end you and take my ship back in time. You cannot stop our plans. Flanking damage detected. Boy, he is hard to take out. <laughs> no. Something's happening. No, no, I've come too far. This time, this time I'll. 
Make sure you're never born! Even if I have to... Uh, shoot you in the cradle! No! Husband, please! Ah, this you is You don't have to do this! His wife. How... How can this be? You... You were lost. I'm here now, husband. Whoa, did she kill him? <laughs> My eyes. Uh, is she a changeling? Why? Clouda. Because this war needed to end, Noi. She's a changeling. Before it consumed us all. That's weird. Got a founder involved here. Well, that's an unexpected twist. Speak to the female changeling. Okay. That was a wild twist. Noi was a danger to all life, even in the Dominion. I could no longer sit back and watch as the Alliance failed to stop him. Time and time again. And so, I have done what you could not. Now, we must destroy this vessel, so it can never be used again. Let us end this war. Once and for all. Do you think that will end the conflict? She's got a point. Without Noi, without Anorex, the TLF will lack the power and leadership needed to fight the Alliance. The war will end. And who knows, maybe there'll be a chance at a lasting peace this time. Stranger things have happened. Indeed, the true. The situation could have been avoided. He was finished. You didn't need to execute him. That's true. The fight was over. Maybe. Maybe we can still do this the right way. Well, but I'm fine with this result. I'm happy that this result was right. It ended just fine. This is a time ship. We should be able to generate a localized temporal spike and send ourselves back to a point before this whole situation goes too far. Let's finish this without resulting to cold-blooded murder. Hmm. I... Now this is a this is a this is a real conflict. The last one was an easy moral decision. This one is more tough. Do we use the Anorax, go back in time, do that all again, and hope that it just works out? But what if it doesn't? Anything could change if we go back in time and change it. If we leave the timeline alone right now, Anorax is out of the way. He's gone. We solved that problem. Now we can destroy the ship and forget all this stuff. I actually think the right answer is the second one. Tampering with history was what started all of this. Let's destroy Anorax and be done with it. I don't agree with Burnham in this situation. Messing with time will just really make things terrible. Again, it could so many different things could happen, many different outcomes that we can't even think of. The whole thing could turn out differently or worse. That's what got us into this trouble. I'm sorry, I gotta go with the second option. Tampering with history was what started all this. But man, I wanna play this again and see what the other option does. But I'm going with the second option. Let me know which option you went with, because this is a tougher one. Start the self-destruct. Okay. Uh, it, dropped, it dropped one of my missions and I was afraid for a second. Alright. Start self-destruct. I think blowing this thing to pieces is the you right answer. chosen wisely. I am pleasantly surprised. Yeah, what now, Founder? I have much to discuss with the leaders of the Alliance. Steps must be taken to protect the timeline from criminals like Noi. For you, the war is over. Return to your ships. I suspect we shall meet again in due time. I just think that was I the right answer. I believe that will be enough for this trial, my friends. I just do. I think that was the right answer. Yarnik awaits our return. He will, no doubt, have things to discuss after observing your actions here. Let's return. 
Yeah, let's. Speak with Yarnak. In allowing the murder of Noi, you made him a martyr for his cause, and the temporal war continues. Noi's followers go on to destroy the homeworlds of every Alliance member in antiquity. With no opposition, they become the dominant force throughout space and time. Well, maybe that wasn't the right answer. I believe we did the right thing in the, the end. The loss of Noi was tragic to be certain. But the risk of losing countless more to temporal manipulation was too great. In his madness, Noi's pursuit of vengeance would have laid waste to many a world. Bringing an end to that insanity was a mercy. Your participation in the trial has been informative thus far, but we require more data to make our decision. Another scenario has been prepared. Enter the portal when you are ready to begin. This way. I still think I made the right decision though, but it sounds like the outcome was pretty terrible. This place right. isn't familiar. Either of you know where we are? I don't recognize it either, Commander. I know where we are, I just don't know when. Knowing that's gonna make all the difference here, believe me. Let's take a look at those consoles and see if there's any useful information in them. So we're in her time period then? Discovery time period? I'm guessing... Science officer's log. He saw four it was a test site for Section 31's Project Daedalus. Ah uh, yeah, the time travel. The planet's atmosphere is toxic to most life forms, but we were able to establish a safe work area and habitat. We've set up a plasma reactor to power the phase discriminators we'll need to capture the Red Angel. Ah, uh, okay. If I know where we are. Works, that is. If it doesn't, I know exactly. I know exactly where we are now. This is a recent entry, but the area is deserted. We need to know more. This is where they caught the Red Angel. Science officer's log. Control found us. We fought valiantly, but... Discovery wasn't a match for Control's Section 31 ships. What's left of her crashed. Not far from here. Ooh, different outcome. Somehow, Saru and Tilly were able to transfer the sphere data to this location. But it's only a matter of time before Control figures that out and comes to collect its prize. I need to get the sphere data somewhere Control can't find it. To do that, I need the Red Angel. But the thing is, I can't trap the Red Angel without help. So I can only hope that someone from Discovery has survived. And they make it here before Control does. If Tilly was here, she'd be a font of optimism. But I know what that atmosphere can do. The do or, um, speaking to, is taking a little long here. Logic she, suggests that I, I wish she would talk a little faster. Before it's too, late. For now, too many pauses. Too many pauses. As Spock would say, there are always possibilities. She needs to speed up her speech here. Everything matches up to the point where Discovery crashes. That's where things change, and for the worse. Judging by the lack of survivors present, I think we have to finish what they started. If that's even possible. Do you have a question? Alright, tell us about Control. Control is a sophisticated artificial intelligence created by Section 31. It was originally designed as a threat assessment program. But it evolved into something terrible. And it has a plan! If it collects the sphere data. Control will pursue a path that ultimately leads to a complete loss of life in the galaxy. We cannot let that happen. Alright, sphere data. The sphere was a life form. It was extremely old and collected a vast amount of invaluable data over the course of its life. It passed that information on to the crew of Discovery before it died. Control did everything it could to acquire the data. Particularly the data on artificial intelligence. 
It wants that data to achieve sentience. If that happens, it's all over. Control will be unstoppable. Okay, well, let's stop it. We were so close to this. To failure. To death. They did a good uh, recreation of we this area. We need to set the phase discriminators at that console. They did a really good uh, recreation of all this. Good. Now we need to prepare the stasis beams at that console. So far, so good. We need to use that console to prime the EMP next. Almost finished. Use that console to align the containment field. We've set up the trap. Now all it needs is the bait. Me. You'll need to go back to the previous room, close the door, and yep. turn off the vents. And expose you to a toxic atmosphere? Yes. Assuming things go as they did before, the Red Angel will appear in time to save my life. When that happens, activate the trap. All right, just like the episode. Pretty cool. They do, yeah, like I said, they did a real good job recreating all this. I've done all I can with these ancient phase discriminators. We should have the power we need for this little stunt. But we're only getting one shot, so make it count. No pressure. <laughs> Ready when you are, Commander. Okay, I right. I got one shot. Do it. Initiate sequence on my mark. In five, four, three, two. Wait, abort! Do not engage! Picking up a massive surge of tachyon radiation. Well, that's the Red Angel. She's here! Do it! Do it now! Activate the phase discriminators. I don't know why we're... What the battle is we're gonna have to do here between good Activate and evil. Activate EMP. So far, this is just like the episode. Which again, they did a really good job. Doing? We don't have time for this. Discovery is gone. We have to deal with it ourselves. We have to stop control now, or it all ends. Uh -huh. and now we have two burn-ups. This ought to be interesting. Okay, talk to the Red Angel. I get the feeling you were expecting someone else in that suit, Commander. Yep, her mother. Yes. My mother. She designed the suit with my father and used it to escape a Klingon attack. In doing so, she learned how control ended all life in the future. After that, she used the suit to try and stop that from happening. Clearly, in this reality, that task has fallen to me. How can we help? Transfer the sphere data to my suit so I can take it into the future, where Control can never find it. We need to act fast. Control is on its way here now. This needs to happen before it arrives. I mean, yeah, okay. But where's the good and evil fight? <laughs> Are we gonna fight Control? Oh, we are. How? Are they under control? Get it? Ha 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 The sensor log said Discovery went down with all hands. Struggle is pointless. Yep, they are under control. <laughs> Control's using members of Discovery's crew as shock troops. Well, they're doing things to me. Where'd my mouse cursor go? Oh. 
They're pretty easy to take down, actually. Unless they come back. Oh. If I they leave the field, do I'll come back. To the future. You'll have to fight control without me. Okay, control is a big control slimy can't be killed octopus. With regular weapons. You need to do something unconventional. I just did. <laughs> I shocked Try it. Try to magnetize the floor. It'll disrupt it. Uh, Weaken uh, it and lure it to me. I'll distract it while you give it a magnetic shock. Well, It'll take I... several shocks to finish it for good. Okay, where do I do that? It says I need to magnetize the floor. I don't know where to go to do that. It's weakened. Lead it to the platform. Oh, okay. That's all I gotta do? I've got its attention. Quick! Magnetize the floor! Where? Oh, over here. See, I didn't know where to go exactly. It worked! Do it again! Different control? I'm actually weakening it pretty good. It's weakened. Lead it to the platform. Oh, okay. We gotta. I see. We gotta get it over here now. Hello. Come on, control. It's distracted. Give it another blast. Magnetize the floor again. Then I gotta run back over here and do the same thing. Good! One more shock should finish it off! What are you? Oh, a little tiny control. It's weakened. Lead it to the platform. Come on, control. Over here. Here, boy. Here, boy. Hurry. Magnetize the floor. Finish it off. Uh, this little thingy is attacking me. Um, but it ate her. Probably not a good idea. Control is using nanites to take over the future version of me. If that happens, it'll gain access to the sphere data. I can try to inoculate future Burnham with my own nanites. This should prevent Control from accessing the sphere data through her, but it'll alter her biosignature. She won't be compatible with the suit if this works. Too risky. The suit could wind up trapped here. Given time, Control could find a way to access the sphere data. We need to think about destroying the data. Purge it from the suit before Control can access it. I could do that, but losing that data, all of that knowledge gone forever. Consider this. The means of eliminating Control could be held within the sphere data as well. Deleting it could be a fatal mistake. Oh, here's our dilemma. This one's even harder than the last one. I give him credit for giving us hard choices to make. We can't risk Control accessing the sphere data. Delete it. The data is too valuable to lose. Inoculate Michael. Um, I guess it's the first one. We don't know necessarily what's going to happen, even if we do inoculate. We have no choice. We can't risk control accessing the data right now. We're in the here and now, and we can't... All we can do is right now. So let's do right now. <laughs> That's the option I'm choosing. Get ready. This is going to sting. A lot. Do it. But again, I wonder where the other option would lead to. A little more than a damn sting. I like how assimilation is the answer, though. <laughs> From his 
get it right. Resistance is, is futile. futile. That was a nice little battle. Oh no, we made a Borg. <laughs> a control Borg. Of seven. Now that's different. Well, that was unique. Kind of interesting. Accolade complete. The best on fence? Sure. Oh, what an interesting result. Okay. Hello. Still alive. She's dead. The sphere data is gone as well. Shock of removing it must have been too much for her. I just watched myself die. Yeah, sorry about that. Unfortunately, we have a new problem. At the end, before it beamed out, I think what was left of control merged with some of my nanites. Uh, yeah, I'd say along with some of your genetic material, too. Yeah, and now there's a Borg control hybrid version of me running loose somewhere. Sounds like Whatever fun. Whatever the Excalbians are doing here needs to stop now. Agreed. We need to get through to them. This has gone too far. Rest easy. The trial of Esau 4 has come to an end. <laughs> what a thing. My apologies, friends. These events must have taken a heavy toll upon all of you. We should return to speak with Yarnik now. Let us leave this place. Come along, my friends. Okay, Yarnak. How quickly you extinguished a wealth of knowledge. And to what end? Your decision to eliminate the data also claimed the life of the Red Angel. Control continues to exist, and the fate you sought to prevent will still come to pass. Yeah, that's kind of terrible how that turned out, but I... I don't know. In your trial, that simulation, yes. Preventing Control from gaining access to the Sphere data was a just and necessary action, despite the cost. While the entity continues to exist, it is vulnerable. Precious time was purchased this day. Time that, God willing, will allow brave souls to find a way to stop control and bring an end to its inhuman march of destruction. I have my concerns regarding this trial. Yarnik isn't a very impartial judge, and he's clearly a prominent figure in Excalbian society. If his opinion of our actions continues downward, the situation could become volatile in a hurry. Still, it could be worse. We still have time to present our case here. Hopefully we will win some Excalbian hearts and minds in the process. So I guess that's the end of part one. Gonna get daily event progress toward the ship. Dilithium ore, assault squad phaser rifle. Is that what she's holding? Bolt damage, full auto sweep. Phaser damage, universal kit module, Delphic puddle. Radiation damage, resistance debuff creates a Delphic puddle near the targeted foe. To all foes within the area, they do, it does radiation damage. And uh, all damage resistance reduced, okay. I have been informed that Yarnik and the others wish to privately discuss the results of the trials. You are free to return to your vessel or remain here until the recess reaches its conclusion. Once that happens, you will be summoned to continue the trial. As much as I'd like to see what a ship of this time period is like, I feel like we should stay here. We might have the opportunity to speak with Excalvians other than Yarnek and see what they think of all this. True. Any insight on the trial or its possible results would be valuable. I'm not as optimistic as Commander Burnham when it comes to the Excalvians. Returning to the ship has its benefits. I could use a drink. <laughs> Several, actually. Huh. I leave the decision to you. Well, I'm going to take the decision of let's take a break while they deliberate because that's where I'm going to pick up on the second video. <laughs> I don't know if playing this I would choose to go straight to part two or if I would want to take a break. I will say this. This was a long mission, so I actually do physically in the real world feel like taking a break. 
having a pee break, that is, and a drink, <laughs> and maybe a pizza or two, <laughs> and definitely a coffee. So yeah, I'm going to do that. We'll take a little break here on our ship before we do part two. So let's go here. It looks like, yeah, part one is now done. I'm done with it. And we can now do part two. Um, so I will save that for the second video. So while we're waiting on that, let's talk about this, shall we? First, let me look at my rewards. So here's the uh, puddle thing. I might try that out in the future. Here's the assault squad phaser. I might try that out as well. I should have progress toward my ship, right? Daily completed, yep. Total progress, so my daily for the ship is completed by doing that one mission. So that's nice. But it was a long mission, I will say that. In summary, it was a long mission. Now, here's what I enjoyed about the mission. I enjoyed going back and playing old missions that we played in the game, but from a different angle. Reimagined, you could say. That is always unique to me. Anytime a story can do that, either on TV or a movie or in a game, where you play something from a different angle that you've never seen before, that's cool to me. So I loved that. I enjoyed that. They recreated those scenes uniquely and added new things to give us new challenges. I love the twist and the turns on all that. I also love the twisted outcomes. Um, whatever the choices that I picked had a really crazy outcome like you know control just takes over everything or noise um, even though we defeated Noi the the time people still took over the entire universe you know the twisted outcomes like that we had um, Hakiv get assimilated I guess I don't know in uh, at the end of the last one we had um, seven of nine emerge from control as a Borg so a control hybrid, a hybrid Borg control drone. What an interesting idea. So uh, I liked those things. I also liked how tough the choices were. Um, there were a couple there, the second and third one specifically, that gave me a hard time trying to figure out what the right answer really is. And I don't know if there is a right answer, only just what you would choose. Um, so I chose what I think is best or what sounded good at the time, but I'll tell you this much, I want to know where the other answer leads. So I may replay this and maybe just record what the other options do because I want to know I want to know what they do unless the choices you made in this mission affect the next mission. I don't think they would because we've never seen anything like that in this game connected mission to mission yet. But just in case, I will go ahead and play the second mission first uh, with the choices I just made with this first mission. And then after I do the second mission, I will go back and uh, make different choices and see what that is. And maybe record those different choices and uh, see what the alternates of those are. That will be a lot of fun. But I do appreciate the hard time they gave us. Um, on those on those choices this is also pretty nostalgic they used a kind of boring episode kind of a one-off for the original series and turned it into something even better than it originally was so for that I give them kudos that really is good and then you know taking us back through time and seeing these other events just really cool and yeah they had to bring in Burnham and Discovery into the mix because that is the thing now is to force discovery into the franchise so i get that we're going to continue to see that and uh, i don't fault them for doing it because i know they're being pressured to do it and uh, just like the tv show is forcing discovery on us so is the game and that's just what they're having to do but at least it was an interesting story. At least they used the one capturing the Red Angel. That's a very that's the second season stuff right there, which is way better than the first season of Discovery. Let me just tell you, if you want to get into Discovery, skip the first season and just start with the second season. It at least has a much better storyline. And so at least they use that storyline from the second season and not something from the first season. So again, I give them credit for that. 
overall, um, this was also a tough mission. It was very hard. I had it on advanced difficulty, and the enemies hit pretty hard. I lost my life once. Um, this was a very difficult, even with all the powers and abilities I have. So I give them credit for that as well, making it um, a challenge. I'm sure if I played it on normal, it'd be a little easier. But uh, that's pretty nice. I think I got damage too. Or at least I thought I saw damage on myself that I needed to heal. So I appreciated all that. Um, I really don't have anything majorly negative to say about this. Um, it was enjoyable from a uh, mission. It was unique, very unique in Star Trek Online. They did the cutscenes were really smooth. They were really good. They recreated the events very well for this game engine. It's a very limited game engine, but they were able to recreate those scenes and it actually looked pretty good. So I give them credit for all of that. Whoever, you know, put all this together and did all the art and all the animations and the effects, they deserve a hand clap for sure. I enjoyed this. I enjoyed this. Um, this was good. Just went on a little long, but I guess the battles wouldn't be so long if I were playing on normal mode. It wouldn't be so hard. But this was still pretty fun. A lot of dialogue to go through, but that's expected, I guess. If I played this again, I would just, you know, skip through the dialogue real fast. But, uh, yeah, I look forward to the second one and seeing where it can go. And seeing what the uh, resolution is going to be for that. And I enjoy having Seven of Nine alongside. Absolute, absolute pleasure to have Seven of Nine on our side. That is, that is nice. So that's where I'm going to leave this video. Um... I give it an A plus right now. I've got really nothing major negative to say about it. This is an A plus episode. This is good. This is good Star Trek. This is the kind of stuff I want to see. I love it. I'm going to leave this here and uh, and I will record the next video, uh, number two mission to this, part two mission, and uh, see what that's like. So leave your comments below and let me know what you think of part one. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one. Check out Twitter at Brent underscore justice for updates. You can follow me there. Also check out my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Brent justice. This helps support the channel and also allows me to publish more and more videos.